The world belongs to God. The earth and all its people. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God, show us your light and your love. Lead us to yourself. children. I'm one of the members of the Through Faith Mission team that is supporting St Andrews at his, with its Light 2020 week. For these few days we're going to take the story of Nehemiah from the Bible. This is a story that happened 445 years before Jesus came. It shows how God loves to take broken things and broken people and put them back together again. This is called restoration. Today we meet Nehemiah, a man far from his own country who followed God closely and who dreamed of returning. He cared so much about his people. One day he had a chance to speak to the king about this. Let's watch today's drama. 
a cupbearer and the king. <clears throat> there was a powerful king in a distant country called Persia. The Jews had been taken there as prisoners because they disobeyed their God. But after many years, some of them began to do very well. There was a Jewish man called Nehemiah. Everyone knew that he could be trusted and that he wouldn't do wrong. The king of Persia heard about him and gave him a very important job. Nehemiah was his cupbearer. This meant that everything the king drank would first be tasted by Nehemiah, just in case one of the king's enemies tried to poison him. Nehemiah's job meant he was very close to the king. Everyone had to be happy around the king. He didn't want any grumpy people nearby because he was the only one allowed to be in a bad mood. I won't put up with unhappy people. I only want happy people around me. The moaners can go and moan elsewhere. Even if somebody had just died, the king expected his servants to come in with a cheerful face or they could be punished. One day, Nehemiah heard about his fellow Jews back in Jerusalem. Not much was left of this beautiful city as it had been destroyed by enemies and all the people were frightened and very unhappy. He cared so much about his country and remembered when it had been famous with Jerusalem as its special city. He was so sad, he cried for days. He went without eating for his people. He went and prayed for his people, asking God to forgive them and be kind to them again. Finally, he made a brave and dangerous decision. Nehemiah decided to let the king see how unhappy he was. So when he came to give the king his wine as his cupbearer, he was quite sad. And the king was concerned. He liked Nehemiah and asked him what was wrong. Nehemiah, why are you so sad? My country is in a terrible mess. Jerusalem is destroyed. And the enemies are making my people's lives unbearable. Please let me go home. Help them rebuild the city. Everyone in the royal court held their breath to see if the king would get angry. <gasps> yes, Nehemiah. I will let you go home to your homeland. Your people need you, and I will send a royal letter stating that you have my permission, and I will send soldiers with you to make sure you have a safe journey. So brave Nehemiah, with a small band of Jews, made the long and dangerous journey back to Jerusalem, hundreds of miles. When they finally got there, Nehemiah cried when he saw the terrible state of the once beautiful Jerusalem. He went out secretly at night to make a closer inspection. Then he planned, and he was good at planning, to rebuild the walls straight away to protect the people living there. Not everyone was happy to see Nehemiah and to hear of his plans. Enemies were already starting to stir against Nehemiah and the Jews. Now let's uh, reflect on this story. Sometimes things seem so hopeless that we want to ignore them and carry on our own lives. But if we really care, we can't do that. Nehemiah had to find the courage to take a big risk. And when he did, God gave the king a heart of kindness towards him. It was just the first step, but it meant there was no hope. Let's think 
for a minute about things that need restoring, putting back together in our country. Things get broken in this world. Promises, possessions, families, marriages, friendships. It can be really painful when things or people we love are broken. And especially when we are far away and don't feel like there's anything we can do. We can feel hopeless and, or, and give up or we can ask God what we can do in the place he has put us. God loves us to put things back together that have been broken, even if it is our own fault. If we say sorry and ask him how, he will put us together again. After all, he made us in the first place, so he knows. Let's uh, bow our heads and pray. Lord, please give us eyes to see what could be changed for the better in our country and hearts that care. Give us courage to step out where you are asking us to and to begin the journey towards restoration. Amen. And we have a memory verse today that maybe you'll try and remember. It's on the flip chart and it goes like this. If it pleases the king, let him send me to the city in Judah so I may rebuild it. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 5. Let's, let's do that again. If it pleases the king, let him send me to the city in Judah so I may rebuild it. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 5. Thank you.